Hey guys, welcome back to another video. You are looking out my window, my spotted window. <laughs> I want to show you what we're going to be making today. Is that not the cutest thing? It is an embroidery hoop decoration for your window. I'm going to show you how to do this, what you need, and we'll get right to it. Okay, so here we go. I got this idea. I was looking in my room for things to pour in, and I said, why can't I use that? That'll be awesome. So, basically what I did was I got a piece of material that resin will not stick to because obviously this is an open ring. So you need something underneath. So what you're gonna have to use is either, this is a dollar store tablecloth, which resin will not stick to, a heavy duty garbage bag, one of the black ones, um, painter's cloth, the plastic, wax paper, freezer paper, a silicone mat. This one was made using a silicone mat this ring is too big for my mat. It doesn't fit. So that's one thing you're going to need. Then I thought, well, how am I going to stop it from leaking out of the sides? So what I came up with is I used paper clay. Paper clay is an air dry clay. And basically it takes roughly about 48 hours for it to start hardening up which is plenty of time for you guys to pour your resin in here, let it cure overnight, and then remove this from the ring. So basically what I'm going to show you how to do is dam this in so that the resin doesn't leak out. And then I'm gonna show you also what I use to create those, those underneath colors. This is a two layer process. You do the first layer, using PBO paints. And then the second layer, you can go back on top and add some uh, colored resin, or you can leave it alone if you want and just give it a, a top coat. You can do whatever you want. This is just the way that I do it. So the first thing you have to do is, and I'm just working on a little Lazy Susan here that I had just to make it easier for myself. You do not need one though. First thing you have to do is take your hoop apart. Also, I forgot to mention, when this is said and done, the way that you are going to hang this is, they sell those little suction cups with the little metal hoop that you can stick on your windows. You're gonna stick one of those on your window and hang it right through the hardware here and you'll be good to go. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove the outer ring and put it to the side. That is not needed again until this project is completely done. Then the next thing you have to do is protect the sides. So you're going to take some paper clay or I guess you can even use oven baked clay because that would never get hard. And you're going to push it tightly up against this frame. And you're going to do that all the way around the outer edge. When it is done the next day, you may find that some of this clay is not stuck, but it's a little, it leaves a little behind that you have to just either pick off with your finger or you can um, sand it down lightly with a piece of sandpaper. And I will show you here what I'm talking about. This one I have not sanded yet. I just wanted to show you guys before I did. See how there's a little bit stuck on the edges here? So you can lightly buff that, it'll come right off. And then you put your hoop back on and you're good to go. So I'm gonna go around this and push it in really hard up against the frame. until I have the entire thing closed off and then I will be back. I'm not gonna bore you watching that. Okay, so I have 
my resin mixed up. I have the inner part of my embroidery hoop closed off using paper clay, which I don't know if I mentioned, you can buy at Hobby Lobby, online, Michaels, any craft store. This part of the hoop should not be used at this time. That should be the part with the hardware should be put away. So the first thing you want to do is mix up enough resin to at least cover the area that you're working on. You can do just one layer. You can do multiple layers like I will end up doing. This one here that I made was two layers. So it's totally up to you. So I'm just going to pour my resin in. Just start right in the center and let it work its way out. If you don't have enough, you could always mix up more. I prefer doing a thin layer first and then adding to it. Another thing too, don't worry if the back of your piece has little wrinkle lines from the paper in it because no one's going to see it anyway in the back. If you use a silicone mat, if you have one that's big enough, then it'll come out smooth. This one was done on a silicone mat, so it's very smooth. This one may have some lines in the back, but as I said, it's fine. So you just want to spread it out like you're making a pie. Make sure it gets to all the corners. Not that a circle has corners, Tammy. <laughs> you know what I mean. To the edge. All right, so we're good. Next thing you want to do is torch. Get rid of all those bubbles. You're better off using a little hand torch for this size. Okay. You're trying to get the majority of the bubbles now. I will say, I'm not sure if PBO paints, which we are going to use now, and fire get along very well. I think when I was making this one, a little flame may have shot out, but I can't remember, so we're going to find out together. So this is the technique that I did. I literally took PBO paints, dripped them into the clear resin, and used a chopstick to blend them around. Colors I am using today are Vitrail go, uh, Green Gold, Vitrail Deep Blue, uh, this one is the Moon line and it's a blue metal this is pearl also another moon and then we have veil of smoke i was trying to read it in french voila de fume <laughs> which is a moon line so what I like to do first is use the vitrails because those are just solid, deeper colors. And I like to put some in and 
move it around a little bit just to spread it out a little bit. So what I'm going to be using are little pipettes, pipettas, little pipettes. And I'm going to drip the colors in. Now, I'm not sure about that green. I just opened it and it's kind of ugly. Let me try the deep blue first. Uh, PBO paints, make sure you mix them very good. The Vitrail, you don't have to mix so much, but the uh, Moon and the Prisme colors, yes, you do. So this is a very dark blue purpley color. I like this color. So with the, the PBOs and pipettes, pipettes, um, they're very thick, so I like to snip the end off. Maybe a little bit, just to make the hole a little bit bigger. Or else they have a hard time going through the suction. So I'm just going to plop some color here and there. And this almost works like alcohol ink, guys. It's really cool. All right, that's enough of that for now. I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to grab a toothpick to get the cat hair out. Saw a couple of them there, sorry. Just want to get them out now while I can. So now you're going to see some really cool um, effects start to take place once I start adding the different colors. So next I'm going to use the pearl. And I'm just going to give it a good mix. These colors do have a little bit of an odor to them, so if you are sensitive, you should probably wear a mask, work in a ventilated area. They could, after you're using them for a while, they could be quite overbearing. I gotta get another pipette, pipette. I used to watch this woman, I think she was from like Yugoslavia or something like that. And she used to do uh, mixed media work and she used to call it pipetta. So it stuck in my head. I know it's a pipette, but that's how she pronounced it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some drops of the pearl in. Watch how they spread the colors around, just like alcohol inks. I don't know if you can see the effects there, but they are quite cool. Okay, then I'm going to use the Veil of Smoke, which is a nice deep gray smoky color. When you're using PBO paints, you need to keep remixing them. Say I use that white and 10 minutes from now I want to use it again, you have to mix it again. 
that's the hold up here I keep mixing because uh, they separate quickly. And as far as the uh, torch goes, these are an oil-based, solvent-based, I should say. So they could react with fire. I'm going to tell you in a minute if it was just something I had done last time or if they are no good with fire. So here's the veil of smoke. I'll put it right on top of that one. And this is not going to stay like this. I'm going to swirl this. I mean, you could leave it if you wanted to. What I'm thinking is I will pull them in towards the center. And then the last color I want to use is the blue metal. And that one I believe I'm going to put in where the purple color is. Or maybe I'll put it in with the white. Why not? Sure you guys can see all those cool effects in the piece of hair. <laughs> I'm working in my kitchen and it's not as sanitized as my craft room, so there are hairs everywhere. Excuse me a minute. Okay, so this is the last color, the blue metal. And then we're going to pull them all in towards the center. This one is really, really thick. That's my grandson just got here. Sorry. Okay. So now I'm going to just drag the chapstick through it and we'll be good to go. Just do a different patterns, whatever you want. And then we will come back for the next step to add the colored resin over. And we're going to leave it just like that. So I'll take you in for a close-up. Here's the close-up. You can see all the pretty effects. Sorry about the ceiling light. There's nothing I could do about that. So yeah, I will see you for the next video, guys. Have a great night.